Good morning everybody and welcome back to another episode from Imp of Bee. I've come back to our favourite location with me and Teddy. Um, I come here, it's a lovely location, there's lovely views, but more importantly when I'm filming there's not many people around. <laughs> so, and I'm going to talk today about the outside of the bongo. I had a special request from one of you actually, Stephen Hunter. Hi Stephen. Um, that, yeah, seen lots of the inside, but let's see the external view of the bongo. Now, I never really thought about doing that because there doesn't seem to be much on the outside of the van. But being as you've asked, I will do that today. And I thought I would incorporate in that a couple of my favourite quirky features that are peculiar to a bongo. Okay, starting with the the passenger side of the van. I always get confused, is it near side or off side? I'm going to bet it's near side, but I might be completely wrong. I hope the wind noise isn't going to be too bad. I have got a muffler on the microphone, but I might need to do a little voiceover if, uh, if the wind noise is too bad. So my van obviously has the high top, but you can get varieties that come with no um, pop top roof at all which we call tin tops and then there's a variety of different pop tops and mine has since last year anyway had the high top this side door here is a sliding door so if I just open that to reveal well Teddy <laughs> of course um, yeah, I like the side door. It does take up a lot less room in car parks when you're loading shopping in. Um, and it's just, I call it a swish swish door. It's lovely when you're inside and you parked at a lovely viewpoint. Um, it is lovely to just open the door. <laughs> There's Teddy again. And yeah, just uh, don't have to worry about bumping your doors. One of the quirky features of the bongo is when you shut this. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that sort of electronic clunking noise. It just reminds me of camping in the van. If you get out in the night to go to the toilet or whatever, it does wake up whoever else is in the van. It's very difficult to be um, quiet in the middle of the night in the van. But if I show you that from the outside, <laughs> you can see it. It sort of just automatically closes and seals the door there. Another feature of the bongo is, oh, I've just brushed some cobwebs. I've got cobwebs all over my hands. Are these wind deflectors, um, which turn out to be surprisingly useful because if your van is getting a bit condensated, you can open the um, windows while you're driving. There's one on the passenger side, there's one on the driver's side as well. Um, and it just stops if it is raining and you need some ventilation. You can open the windows, it stops the rain blowing in. It also stops the wind blowing in directly. So, yeah, quite useful, really. Moving round to the front of the van. Not sure there's anything of note about the front other than the very cute badge. <laughs> I just think it looks a, a characterful vehicle. It's quite skinny and tall, relatively speaking. So you can usually tell a bongo on the road from a mile away. And then we move around to the driver's side. I hope you're all admiring the Go Faster stripes. They are wearing a little bit here. I know a lot of people really don't like these and can't wait to remove them. And there is a way you can use that sticky stuff remover. And I've never bothered because <laughs> I just think it's part of the charm, part of the age of the vehicle, these little stripes. So I've left mine, they have faded since I've had the van. The passenger and the driver's glass is what I would say is regular glass, 
but the rear windows, at least on mine, are tinted. I think it depends which part of Japan the van was imported from, whether yours will have tinted or not. I find that great, it gives you a little bit of privacy, you can still see through, but for stealthy camping and just sitting inside in the daytime, in, um, it just stops people. Well, they do look in still, but they don't know that you're in there. <laughs> Quite useful. My uh, petrol flap is here, and the, the lever to release that is under the driver's dashboard here. You just pull that, and then that opens the flap. Needs a bit of a clean in there, doesn't it? Um, yep, the wheels, nothing to write home about, I don't think. Some people do change the wheels, make them look a bit funky. And then the rear, I've got a bike rack on mine. I quite like all the, the words on bongo, oh sorry, friendy bongo. I quite like that. Again, I know a lot of people can't wait to remove it. Mine's a V6, so I've got the little V6 symbol on there. Rear window wipe. We stuck this on while we were on uh, holidays in Brittany, and I've just left it there. And then another little bongo friendy, in case you didn't know what this vehicle was. This is a um, little sort of a reflector strip. And then if I open the door, this doesn't really count as external, I suppose, but the rear door opens up this way. So it's great, actually, if you need to get into the back of your van and it's ringing, that does afford a little bit of shelter. You can get awnings that attach onto the back here if that is something that you're interested in. I don't have any details on one because I've never had one, but I have seen people use those. And then on the rear window, there is heated demister things. An area to watch if you are looking to buy a van is the underside because, like I've said before, they're prone to rust. So check the sills. Mine are just starting to rust here and that's something I'm really conscious of also the sills and again mine have been great but this year I just noticed some rust here which I need to act on and if any of you've got any tips on how I should manage that then do let me know I've come inside the van again it's surprisingly breezy out there I'm just conscious that all you're gonna hear is muffled wind noise. I'm inside the van again, but I'm gonna go through a couple of the quirky things about the bongo that I just love. <laughs> and uh, if you haven't got a bongo already, you might be interested to know what they are. The bongos come with, well, unless yours have been removed, these, well, they could be footstools, but they're also little dicky seats as well. So I've got one, on the passenger side, there's one on the driver's side as well. And they're rather, and they're rather mysterious things, <laughs> which do cause a lot of confusion for some people. So that's it in its up position. Originally my van had eight seats, so there was a, a row of seats here. So you could use that as a footstool in that position. But it does cause a bit of puzzlement to some people because they're like, if you sit on that, it falls down. So I'll show you really quickly how to get this as a mini seat. So to get this as a seat, you need to move the passenger seat forward. 
move it forward as far as it will go. And then you use the lever to push the seat back rest forward. And that is done by lifting that. The back will then spring forward. And then this flips all the way over. And now you've got yourself a reasonably comfy dicky seat. So there's one on the driver's seat as well, um, which I've already flipped over. And I put a cushion that I made myself on that bit. And you can actually sit there. It, this makes it quite a comfortable backrest. But for us, because we've got the side bed, that is the really useful extension to make the bed a little bit longer. And similarly, when the bed is extended, my feet go on a couple of cushions on that one. Another of the quirky features that I absolutely love about the bongo is the little Japanese greeting you get every time you start the engine. It still makes me smile. I'm not entirely sure what it's saying. I'm guessing it's some kind of polite greeting. And we think it comes from the, I assume, is a little card for toll roads because you can make it say a few different greetings as well. I'll show you how that works. Okay, so if I just get the ignition on, wait a few seconds. <laughs> just lovely. So yeah, I think the sound is activated when you start the engine with this, what presumably was some kind of toll card in here. I mean, how could you not love a vehicle that greets you like that? The other thing I love about the Bongo is the electric window blinds. It's me dropping in from the future. When you watch this little clip, you'll notice the outside view has changed. And that's because when I recorded the blinds at the location earlier on today, I didn't press record, <laughs> so, so I'm doing it on my driveway now. Back to the video. So these are the controls for the blinds. There's one control for one side and another for the other side. So let's see them in motion. <laughs> And up. Perfect. Now some people have connected the blinds to, by some hocus pocus magic, to the leisure batteries so that they can operate the blinds even when the engine is off. We haven't done that. So I can only operate them um, from when the engine or the ignition rather is switched on. However, when we're in the van at night and the engine isn't on, we just pull the blinds down manually and lift them back up again. And I understand it doesn't cause any damage. We don't often use the electric blinds because very often when we're shutting the blinds, the, the van is switched off. And I, like I said, I was are not connected to the leisure battery. I have no idea how that is done. Something to do with looms, I believe. But what we do is just pull them down doesn't look quite as luxurious but it works and I absolutely love the window blinds such a, a useful lovely feature and I think a lot of camper vans don't come with things like that as standard so it's just another reason to absolutely love the Mazda Bongo. For the window blinds there are separate controls that passengers can use um, here obviously when the engine is on or if you have it connected to the loom. The other thing to look for if you get a bongo is to see what remnants there are inside the van and outside of its previous life in Japan. 
So, for example, when we had ours, we imported it. It was immaculate, but when we lifted, um, I think it was the centre console, there were um, a little Japanese chewing gum wrapper and a little sweet. So, as I said, depends when yours was imported and what's been done to it since. Um, will be depending what you find but you probably will have stickers and instructions in various places on the van and I'll show you a couple of those now. So there's this one and I think that was from when it was being exported but I'm not entirely sure it's something to do with a date. There's information here on the model and paint type and an ID in Japanese. I've left this in place. It could, you could, um, you could remove it, but I just like it. It's the instructions for the original bench seats, again in Japanese. I don't know why I like these so much because they're not particularly useful, but it just, it shows the van's heritage, I think because, like I said, they've never been made for the British roads. So all the bongos in this country will have started their life in Japan. Another little sticker. Again, no idea what it's for, what it relates to, but I've left mine intact. Yet another useful feature is this, which is um, a reversing monitor. You probably can't see the display now, but it's connected to parking sensors and it tells me how far I am from obstacles and it starts beeping more and more as I get close to an obstacle and there's a matching sensor at the back there I know modern cars have that um, usually these days but again on a vehicle this age just think it's rather special well that concludes my little tour of the outside of my bongo. I hope you found it useful um, and I went through a few quirky features so if you weren't aware of some of those I hope you found them amusing as well. So I will be back next week and if any of you have any ideas or questions about the van that you want me to cover in future videos then please drop a comment in the comments below and I'll do my best to do a video. I'll be back next week with an update on my future plans in the bongo. So tune in for that. Hit the bell not notifications if you want to be reminded when I've put a video out. But please remember to subscribe. I'm still working on these numbers and desperately want to get to 1000 subscribers. So please help me out. Um, I hope you're all having a great week as well. It's coming to the end of the school holidays now and I can't believe how fast this summer has gone. For those of you who are not restricted to travelling in school holidays, I know uh, September and October are lovely months to travel in. So I hope you've all got plans or something going on in the next couple of months. And even those hardy souls who go away in the winter. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm, something I might be thinking about doing myself this year. So me and Teddy are, are signing out now. Don't know if you can see the little girl down there. Yeah. Um, we'll be back with a video next week. Look forward to seeing you then. Have a great week. Bye.